You're not going to like me for saying this, but here's what I think. I think we Americans probably have a harder time reading the Bible than people from other countries. I knew you wouldn't like this, but uh, don't get me wrong here. I love our country. I love being an American. But here's what you need to know. I think we Americans often miss some major themes in the Bible. Folks, thanks for tuning in this week to The Daily Dose. This week we're talking about the big old question, what is the Bible? And if you've missed a few of the episodes, feel free to go out to our YouTube page and check out the other episodes as we've wondered what is the Bible. If you're watching on Facebook, would you go ahead and do this for us? Would you help us get the word out by liking this post? Share it on your personal page. Maybe you'll also check in on Facebook as though you're here at Calvary. For every check-in, we have a generous donor who's donating, get this, $5 for every check-in to our Backpack Attack program that's feeding kids and families in need right here in Alexandria. You can also stay abreast as to what we're up to by headed out to YouTube and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications. And if you're watching on cable access television, why don't you invite a friend to watch with you next week? Hey folks, here's what you need to know about the Bible as we wrap up this series. The Bible was written by a Jewish minority community that was living under successive brutal regimes that came through again and again, massive military superpowers that again and again conquered that small Jewish community. The Egyptians, the Persians, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Greeks, the Romans, they all came through and destroyed the Jewish people's livelihood. They experienced defeat again and again for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so you can see, uh, well, you can see why they were so excited. They were so excited to call Jesus their king. They were longing for a king that would bring them justice. They had suffered endlessly under the hands of these brutal, dominant nations that rolled through for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so the Bible authors, you can understand why, they wrote again and again condemning those who were in power, and those who would take advantage of the poor, the unfortunate, the vulnerable. Again and again, the Bible forces us to ask, what will you do with your power, with your wealth, with your armies? What kind of world will you create with it? Will you use it to manipulate and to overpower others? Or will you use it to help the widows, the orphans, the refugees among you? In 1 Kings, there's this story of the Queen of Sheba, and she goes to visit King Solomon, and she tours his lavish palace. She uh, sees his servants and his food and all his wealth, and get this, then she tells him of all things that she knows why he's so blessed. And this is why, to maintain justice and righteousness. She tells him that. You are so blessed so that you can maintain justice and righteousness. Now, that's Bible talk for you are wealthy and power, powerful so that you can care for those on the underside of society, everyone who's down and out. But if you are familiar with the story of Solomon, if you grew up in the church, uh, Solomon, he just keeps on using his power to dominate and to expand his empire. And here's what's so wild about that story. It's wild because his empire diminishes. It diminishes as he seeks more power. Now, I don't know about you, but I grew up with history lessons that tell us that the strong always flourish. The big, the mighty, the bold, they always flourish. But that's not the story of the Bible. In fact, the Bible is different. The biblical authors condemn. They condemn people with power who hold on to power and amass power simply for the sake of power. This happens again and again in the Bible. And so I want to be careful here, but that's why I want to suggest that we Americans, we often, well, we often miss some central themes in the Bible. 
Is he, can you see how, as the most powerful nation in the world, the most powerful superpower in the world, people who live with so much and are always eager for more, can you see how we might miss a few things in the Bible? In the Psalms, there's this great passage. It says, you trust in your chariots, but we, we trust in the Lord. You see, as Americans, you know this. It's part of who we are. It's ingrained in us. We crave more, more wealth, more power, more control, more dominance, more victories. But here's what you need to know. The Bible attests to this again and again. These authors knew it in their gut. More wasn't a part of God's plan. Let me say that again. More wasn't a part of God's plan. Rather, what matters, and it's clear to those authors of the Bible, that what matters is how we treat each other, how we trust each other. What matters is how we stand against injustice. What matters is how we love one another. Folks, have a great weekend. I lay me down, I'm not my own. I belong to you alone. Lay me down, lay me down. One, two, three, four. With this heart, with this heart, open wine from the depths, from the heights, I will bring sacrifice with these hands open wine hear my song hear my cry I will bring a sacrifice I will bring a sacrifice Prime, giving up all my rights. Take this life and let it shine, shine, shine. Take this life and let it shine. Yo! Yeah.